It's Calgary's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Today's guest is Monica Kretschmer, founder and CEO of Canadian Business Chicks. Welcome to the show, Monica, and thanks for taking the time today to be here for our listeners. Thank you so much. Wonderful to be here. Tell us a little bit about Canadian Business Chicks, its history, and how it started. So this is a really great year. Um, for us, it's year five. So I don't know if those um, listeners that you have are kind of going back to that very first day that they made the decision to jump into those uncharted waters. But um, this year was year five for us. We started actually um, in Rocky Mountain, um, in the Rocky Mountains of Canmore, Alberta. And I launched um, at the Rocky Mountain Soap Company race. And, you know, I always had it in my mind that I would launch the company with 2,500 women. And I had a great big lofty goal of getting a 1% of those women to be my customers or members of Canadian Business Checks. And, you know, I haven't looked back. So it's, that was the very first uh, step that we took. And, you know, as far as building community, I thought that was a great place because of the diversity of the crowd, those are the things that are really one of our core values of collaboration and diversity. Um, and I've built the company really on bringing together women that have the same value set of courage, confidence, commitment, and integrity. So how does it work? Like what, what does it actually do? So we have created, or I have created, uh, you know, it's always funny when we talk to entrepreneurs, they're like, we you know, most of the time it starts with one person. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to own that one person phrase is I've um, created this multi um, marketing platform. So we have events, live events, we have in-person events. I have a mentorship program. And of course, nothing was developed overnight. This was all part of the vision from the onset. And, you know, Mario, it's really different because the business that I created was really you know, if I had pencils to sell, I could show you my pencil, but I had to actually make the pencil and then sell you the pencil. So it's been a really incredible journey to number one, create a community and then create a product and a service to sell, which is helping and support women. Tell me what you think uh, the benefits of doing business in Calgary are these days. This city has so much of a entrepreneurial vibe to it. Um, not only entrepreneurial and people are business minded, but everybody wants to help and support you. They're your champions. They become your friends. And I mean, it's not like we have a really uh, small city. Our city is like 1.4 million um, people in this city, but it really um, plays out like a small town. So everybody really knows everybody. And, you know, people share your struggles. They want you to succeed. And I think that's really what is so attractive to Calgary and what sets us apart from the other cities across Canada is that big city, small town feeling. Mm -hmm. What about challenges though? That's also, that's kind of like that um, chicken and the egg is the challenge because it, you need that diversity. You need to grow. You need to expand. Of course, um, I think that for large companies wanting to, you know, get that culture built, um, it's a great place to, you know, kind of branch into. But I think that we do need to grow. We do need to bring others to let them know what we have to offer. And we need to offer services to elsewhere as well. So mm -hmm. that's where the, the bit of the crunch comes is, you know, we, we still are pretty small and we do need to get our voice out there and show everybody else what we're doing here. Why would you recommend Calgary to uh, entrepreneurs who are starting up a business? Well, there's lots and lots of support here. I think from, you know, I know that we have a mentorship program, but you know, there's no shortage of people that if you ask for help, that they're willing to give it. Now, some of our best ideas come when we least expect them, uh, you know, outside of an office environment, like where do you uh, go to recharge or, or think about your business in a different way and get inspired? That's a loaded question because I think I walk my personal, my business life all is so wound together. Um, I don't think that there is one day, uh, one hour in the day that I don't really think about my business and about that bigger vision. But when I do need to recharge, it's usually on the bike path, usually with my dog close to water along the river. Um, that fresh air seems to really, you know, when I get all wound up and excited about something, it just kind of simmers me down and um, it's almost meditative. Like it gets me into a meditation state. So what are you most excited about uh, Canadian business checks these days? 
Ah, my word for this year. Do you have one of those, Mario? What's your word for this year? I'll have to think about that one. Okay, I'll answer my question, then I want to hear about your word. But this year, the word for me was evolve. I knew that at five years into the business, it would be a growth um, year for me and also a year to sort of take everything um, that I've learned up to this point and evolve it to the next level. Um, I thought that was really important um, to really stand back and look at the milestones and then go, okay, what can we do next? And so part of the evolution, which I'm so excited about is that I'm really going to open up the doors to not only empower women, um, and elevate those female role models, local, nationally, and then globally. But I want to also invite the conversation for men to be able to know what they're, how they're supposed to support women in those roles. I think, so that's part of our evolution for our brand. We're doing a complete brand relaunch, um, around the time of women of inspiration in October, which really speaks to that, um, empowering women and the men that support her. And what about your vision, you know, for the coming years, I guess, for the, well, that is to keep elevating, uh, female role models. Um, Mario, I, you know, stumbled on that with my woman of inspiration awards program, which started with one woman, which has now evolved into a national event, um, with 23 diverse categories. So really through celebration, we champion for each other and uh, we gain the visibility so that people know about our brilliance. Okay. What's been your uh, greatest challenge to overcome in setting this up over the last five years? You know, everybody wants you to be a proven success. I think that's probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks um, when I look back and it's continually a hustle. It's there's. I don't think we ever get through business and there's not a hustle, but I think that is, it's really going down that journey and getting up every single day and going, I'm going to do it. Ignore the naysayers and just go out with your complete vision and not giving up. Um, just knowing that you have to prove yourself and it's okay to prove yourself. So mm-hmm. it's, it's just a continued journey and it's, you know, you have to love what you do. So when you look back in hindsight, uh, knowing what you know now, would you do anything differently from when you first started? Absolutely. There's lots of things I would do differently. Um, marketing one-on-one, you know, I went out doing events and, you know, I wasn't really zeroing in to the right market for the events that I was doing. So I wasted time. That was, you know, if I look back, it's also kind of the learning curve as well. Um, so I think, Really, um, being focused and being very clear of the market was very, was probably one of the biggest learning curves, but I have to say moving forward that it's, um, you know, being a smaller growing company, we're able to be nimble. Mm -hmm. So embracing change is always part of my philosophy. As an entrepreneur, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Ignore the naysayers. You're the one that knows your business better than anybody else. And don't let anybody anybody tell you differently. Okay. I'm going to switch gears. Got you a couple of personal type questions. What's on your bucket list these days? Everybody seems to have one. Oh my goodness. Getting through woman of inspiration only 12 <laughs> weeks away. <laughs> um, you know, gosh, that's a good question. Places you want to go, people you want to see things you want to do. Well, Africa's still big on my list. I know I had a retreat set that I was um, supposed to go on in the summer here. It just, my schedule was way too busy. You know, I wanted to take a group of women. So I want to do an experience. You know, I'm really craving that experience because I have to say that I really haven't had that since I launched my business. And I'm not complaining about that. I love every single day and the work and the long hours I put into, but I really want to do a, a retreat far away to taste the culture of a different place and um, bring some different perspective. All right, cool. So if you weren't doing what you're doing now, uh, any thoughts of what kind of a career profession you'd, you'd be in? You know, that's a good question. I started a foundation in 2017. And if I wasn't really solely focused on building my brand and woman of inspiration, elevating female role models, I think that I would probably be really, really focused on building um, the foundation, which is to empower women to rebuild their lives. So I'd be probably, you know, in some capacity working for the UN. Oh, okay. What book are you reading these days? 
Oh, the book that I'm reading these days, let me see here. I've got about four of them on my shelf. Um, Brene Brown is definitely one of them, Dare to Lead. I always skip through pages and pick out the juicy ones and then close it up and move on to the nether book. Um, I also have a book by Richard Nesbitt, and he's written about how to empower men to lead because I think that's a really great conversation. So it's called Results from the Top. And I just have another sort of more of a spiritual one. And it's um, the universe has your back because I think it's really important to know that whatever decision you make, yeah, we're all guided by a bigger being. And so I always like to flip that one open and, and take out some juicy pieces and use that for inspiration. Mm -hmm. If you had one word uh, that you would pick to, to describe yourself, what would it be and why? Okay. So I... This is a, a great word for me. I love it. Um, resilient. I think that it really embodies my journey, um, especially in the past 12 years as being a very resilient person. I, I believe that, you know, life throws you challenges and your story is, you know, the adversity that you go through is, is for a reason. Um, but you become resilient because of the choices that you make and what you choose to do with that story. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that keeps you up at night these days? No, by the time I'm ready to trump that computer, it's lights out for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, outside of Calgary, is there a favorite place that you like to go to uh, spend time at? You know, I always love to go to Canmore. I like to go to those closer places that are within a driving distance. Um, the mountains are always really lovely. I know that we have a really exciting, I've got to spill the beans here. We're doing a hike with Lorraine Harper for our Women of Inspiration nominees um, just before Women of Inspiration in September. So that's going to be pretty cool because you get back out into nature. Those are the resets for me, right? Is when we can just, you know, not have to worry about social media, not have to worry about anything else except fresh air and some exercise. Mm. So we're creatures of habit. Uh, I'm wondering, do you have a, a daily routine that you follow every day religiously? Every day religiously, I... I get up and actually I don't really get up. That's my secret is, um, I reach over my phone goes off. I set it for quite early and I usually just surf all the news. I search all my feeds right away. First thing in the morning. So I, I get that out of the way before I even really start my day. Um, and then I haven't been doing it every single day, Mario, but I do like to meditate. And I think that that, you know, it might not be as long or some mornings as others, but I do like to set my day off with intention. Okay. And what do you mean by that? So, um, I used to think that I had to get out of bed and meditate and find a comfy spot. By the time I find my comfy spot and I get all organized, 20 minutes is gone. And then I short my meditation. So I just cozy up in bed and I just, you know, go to my meditation place, um, right where I am tucked away and all cozy. And I just really clear my head and, um, go into a meditative state where I try not to think about anything. I'm going to ask you kind of a weird question. So <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> Bear with me. So there's a beautiful tropical island in the middle of the ocean with only one phone booth, right? And no internet. Uh, we're going to drop you off there with uh, no technology at all. So no cell phones, uh, you know, iPads, computers, whatever. At any time, you can use the phone on the island to call a boat and we'll come pick you up. Now, how long would you last before making that phone call? And what do you think you'd do while you were there? Oh my goodness. I don't have any problem being on my own whatsoever, which is a scary part. <laughs> I, um, I think that I can navigate. I enjoy my own company a lot, almost too much sometimes, but I think it would be kind of days. Did you give, did you say you gave me food? Do I have food on the island? Well, I guess you can have, yeah, you can have food. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So if I had food in a beautiful island and a place to stay, you know, I would probably just take it as a silent retreat. I would take it as an absolute treat to be away. So I'd probably avoid picking up that phone call, um, and calling SOS for as long as I possibly could. You know, I, I think that I haven't ever been silent or alone like that for that period of time, I'd like to test the waters for like at least three days. Okay, <laughs> great. Is there anything you'd like to add before you leave us today? You know, I just want to say thank you to you. I know that, uh, you know, it's really important that people know the work that you're doing 
um, we're meeting here. You're taking time out of your day and you know, you're sharing the story and shining the spotlight on people, which is really important because that's how people get to know you. Um, they get to form a deeper bond. So I think I'd just like to say thank you to you for sharing your awesomeness and for what you do for the community. Well, thank you. That's caught me off guard. <laughs> Thanks, Monica, for you're being welcome. our guest on Calgary's podcast.